Now, I didn't expect that potential to be realized. You know, oftentimes it takes three, four, even five albums to get to a point where you go, you know what, they've arrived. Well, with Triumphia, they've arrived on their second CD. Now, I'm not saying that because we saw them live. I'm not saying it because we got to meet them. All that's fine and good. But this CD, from the Crashing Waves, Something in the Way, The Fog, those are the first three tracks. Sleepless is good. Um, Arbor is Calm might be, in fact, I'm going to say, is the best song on the CD. Oh, yeah. Um, Man, what a beautiful song that is. So there's only seven tracks on the CD because in typical progressive metal, you know, format, they're each like 14 minutes long. Yeah, I mean, Arborist Calm is 22 <laughs> minutes. You know, right. I mean, it's a long track. So that being said, there's just five of the seven I love. Now, The Lake of Fire and The Knife are good, but they're not great to me. Now I know I know those are you know supposed to be especially the knife. Um, I think it might be their next single coming off of this. I know Tony was really high on that track. Nice. I hope that's the case. I'll, um, I'll expound on that in my portion of the review. But anyway, go ahead. For me, they just weren't there. Now Arbor's Calm to me was like that's the pinnacle. I mean that's. What if it, you need to just like shut off this broadcast and go listen to the Arborist Calm right now? Just it's phenomenal. But this whole CD from top to bottom is very good. And I gave it, and I told Tony this when I saw him at the show. I haven't told you this yet. I'm giving this a nine out of 10, and I'm putting it up for album of the year in the progressive metal category. Well, I don't, I don't disagree with much of anything you said there, um, which is sometimes rare for us. I will say that, uh, full disclosure, Biv, especially after recurring themes, was definitely more of an ISD fan than I was. I thought they were good. I thought it was a good album. And, uh, you know, hey, a lot of times bands' first album is the stuff they've been working on for years and so a lot of times it ends up being a band or, you know, for many bands, sometimes what many fans consider to be their best stuff. And especially when you have the second album and say what you want, but, you know, the, there's that whole worry of the sophomore slump and are you going to write stuff as good as you did the second time around, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, folks, let me put your mind to rest right now. Um, Imminent Sonic Destruction does not fall into the sophomore slump category with their second album. Uh, Triumphia. Okay in every respects is better than recurring themes, just period. It's better writing. It's better vocals. It's just, they sound tighter as a band. Um, you can also hear that. And I want to say this in the right way to me, recurring themes, and this is not a bad thing because Tony's incredibly talented, but recurring themes to me, and this makes sense based on the interview we had with him last week, kind of sounded like the Tony Bacoli show with some uh, other members of the band kind of helping out type of thing. Triumphia to me sounds like a band involved album like there are you know every single member has their own contribution to the writing and the sound of this band and you can and or to this album and you can totally hear that and see that and to your point Biv I mean granted Arborist Calm is the final track on the album it's 22 minutes long it is one of the better songs I've heard all year and I'm not exaggerating when I say that, but there's no way in hell you can make that a single. <laughs> it's 22 no. minutes. I mean, oh, the, God, fog, no. the fog as it is, is a tough one to pull off. Um, and yeah, they were able to do that because the fog, I think it's like nine minutes or 10 minutes yes, or something like that. So, I mean, it's a long track as well. But yeah, you're talking seven songs of the album. Of course, you just heard the Crashing Waves, which is a great song. Uh, something in the way is a good track. The Fog, of course, you heard last week, which is a, a really good, you know, and I will agree with Tony that if you want to get an idea of what Imminent Sonic Destruction sounds like, The Fog's a good place to start. Don't get me wrong. Uh, like a Fire, I actually really like also. Here's the thing, and I know that you, this is where we'll differ on this one. 
Um, you like Sleepless quite a bit. I don't. I think of all the songs on the album, Sleepless to me kind of falls flat. Um, and I know Tony was really excited about that one because there's a lot of, you know, like three part vocal harmonies on it. To me, it's just, you know, I mean, later on in the track, I kind of dig it. But, you know, for me, it's the one that kind of misses on the album, whereas you feel that the knife is yeah. Where I think the knife freaking rocks. And I said this in the interview with Tony last week, and I'll say it again. When you, they're right up about their sound is, yeah, we're progressive metal, but we also borrow a lot from, you know, kind of the Meshuga strapping young lad type sound, which there's a strapping young lad plug for uh, Devin Townsend, who we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you 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 hear that in a description and you go, OK, well, let me see what that sounds like. And the knife is a great example of a track that for the first 30 seconds sounds like a nevermore track. And then it is flat out Meshuga for the next minute, minute and a half. And it's just, you know, just kind of an off time, heavy, progressive, you know, math metal, as some people like to call it. Just um, really, really chunky off time riffs that just are really, really cool. And they're definitely more up my alley than Biv's. So I understand why. Uh, the knife may not be as as much of a, 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 a accessible track to Biv as it is me. You know, maybe it's more of the heavier, uh, you know, metal sound to it that I like more so uh, than say an Arborist Calm. Which you know, when you listen to that track, I mean, you talk about especially the uh, the keys of a very Biv, and you kind of hit this right on the head. And I don't want to steal your thunder because we did talk about this on the way back from the show. Like a very 70s sticks like sound to the keys in the beginning of Arborist Calm. And that's, for, and I'm not talking on the beginning. I'm talking like the first five oh, minutes seven, of the track. Seven and a half minutes. Yeah. Was if you don't, if you don't listen to that and get, and get sticks, and I'm talking like mid 70s sticks. Yeah. No, absolutely. Not like not, Mr. Not, Roboto. <laughs> no, not Mr. Roboto, but. If you don't get Sweet Madam Blue out of that, I I, I don't know what to tell you. No, I mean, you're, and, you're dead on with that. And and I played that for you in the car because I wanted you to I wanted you to hear the first couple minutes of that and then hear the first couple minutes of Arborist Calm. And when you heard it, you know right away you were like, dude, you're right. Yeah, and that's, no, you're spot on. Anything away from it, that's that's look. If you can pay homage to what I consider to be one of the greatest progressive rock bands ever that really opened up the world to the possibility of a progressive metal it sticks. Yeah. Especially their 70s stuff, you know? Oh, yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. And, and that's the thing to me that I, uh, you know, I took away from it is just an entirely different sounding song than the rest of the album. And that's not a bad or good thing. Because the rest of the album's good too, but this just, I'm telling you, if you can figure out how to write that kind of level material the next time around, Tony, granted, you don't have to make them all 22 minutes, but Arborist <laughs> Calm, dude, A plus work. Um, just a really solid album. And if you're a progressive metal fan, and let's be honest, if you're an according to metal you know, listener and, and uh, according to metal head, then you probably are because we seem to lean, especially Biv, um, more towards the progressive metal side of what we review and what we're really, really into. Um, but I'm here to tell you, man, um, just a step up in musicianship um, on every level uh, of Triumphia over recurring themes. Um, I, I, Which, by the way, is saying a lot because recurring themes was not a bad album. No, at not all. at all. No, not by all means, not at all. Um, not quite as high as Biv on this one, but I'm really, really close. I actually have an eight and a half out of ten on this one. Um, and I'll also say this in regards to this album. Um, what and you'll you'll hear this later on in the, in the broadcast probably too when we we talk about it. I mean. Um, it's one thing to like a band and listen to a band. And I'm just here to say the best thing about what we do, um, is I get, you know, just from a personal standpoint, I get to every couple of weeks, get behind a microphone and talk metal with my friend Scott. And then on top of that, we also get to talk to some amazing musicians that end up are not only just incredibly talented, but are just cool dudes. And I will put Tony Piccoli right up there with some of the cooler guys we've ever had on the show. 
that is somebody I at this point, you know, maybe right up there with Kim Olsen from Anubis Cade, probably in my world of all the people we've had on the show of just being one of the more genuinely nice and just cool dudes we've ever, ever talked to. Uh, and to get a chance to, to meet him in Chicago and get a chance to meet the band and get a chance to, you know, check them out at the merch table and, and just see them do what they do live. It really even makes it even a better experience. Um, so I know they don't tour a lot and that shouldn't surprise you the way we've talked about how, how hard that is for metal bands to even try to financially pull off nowadays. But if for some reason you get a chance to, and, uh, imminent sonic destruction comes through your neighborhood or damn, if you're in Michigan and (laughs) they are around you in the local scene, if they're playing, dude, check them out. Seriously. They are a band you have to get. And by the way, visit their website because they, are a band that has figured out a way to do merch very, very well. They're very crafty at what they do. It's affordable merch, too. It's not, like, insanely expensive. Um, and it's just really cool. And by the way, Tony and Imminent Sonic Destruction, if you're listening, my 8-year-old son is using the flash drive I bought from the concert, courtesy of Imminent Sonic Destruction. Uh, so you'll be happy to know that my uh, my 8-year-old is... Uh, rocking out to some uh, 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 ISD um, with the uh, track that you put on the uh, <laughs> on the flash drive that That's I got. Sweet. No, I swear to God, uh, Lucas, it was just so funny. And I was telling him at the merch table, this is a true story. So the day of the concert, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit, but the day of the concert, um, there was a letter sent home of, hey, your kids need to bring the following things that we didn't include in the school supplies that you need to buy, and they're going to need it eventually, so you may as well pick it up thing. And one of them was a flash drive because they're going to be going to computer lab and doing some stuff. And I swear to you, as I walk in and I see at the merch table, they have an imminent sonic destruction flash drive. And I went, yep, done, sold. (laughs) So I think I needed to buy one anyway, and it worked out perfectly. So uh, just great dudes, great album, Triumphia. Like Biv said, we won't be offended. Listen to DGM, because, of course, we talked about them earlier. But then before you listen to DGM, because you can wait on that one, listen to Arborist Calm from Triumphia right now. Seriously, right now. Pause. We'll wait. That might be the metal track of the year. Yeah, it very well could be. We'll wait. Pause. Okay, welcome back. Check out Triumphia and the rest of the album, or songs on the album. You won't be disappointed. Killer album. Cool dudes. Imminent Sonic Destruction. Check them out. I am. That was higher off of Transcendence, the most recent album from the Devin Townsend Project, of course. If you are a fan of Heavy Devi like I am from way back, you know that Devin is all over the place when it comes to the music he produces. In fact, more recently, he's been doing bluegrass. Okay, if that gives you any idea of what Devin Townsend's been into recently. But I, you know, my my history with Devin Townsend goes uh, you know, more into I know he's done you know kind of his own self titled project, which is more of the calmer, nicer side of Devin Townsend. But of course, uh, you know I love uh, Strapping Young Lad. In fact, Syl is one of the bands that uh, you know was one of the first metal bands that um, I really, really got into of more of the more you know, modern day heavy sound um, of, you know, when you, when I, when I first heard city, I was like, Holy shit, this is awesome. Uh, so, you know, just incredibly heavy, uh, complex, but not overly complex. And, you know, big strapping young lad fan. I even like Ziltoid the omniscient, which was weird stuff that he did, you know, with, uh, uh, you know, with uh, program drums, which I'm never a fan of, but, you know, the whole idea of an alien coming to the planet Earth to find the finest cup of coffee in the galaxy. And he writes an entire album off of that. 
Um, yeah, that's Devin Townsend in a nutshell. Um, but, uh, you know, the Devin Townsend project has always been kind of the more softer side of Devin Townsend. And I find this album, in, especially of all the quote unquote Devin Townsend branded stuff that he's done, very unique and very good in a different and 